Hello, saints of God. Today is Monday of Holy Week. And what I have thought that I would do is that I would share with you a scripture reflection for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of Holy Week. Um, I'm asking you all to pray during this time as we walk with Jesus in his passion. And I hope that some of the words that I speak to you today would, would be uplifting. Our gospel today is from the gospel of John. And I'm going to share this gospel with you and, and read it to you. Six days before the Passion, for the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He was not, he said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She, she bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In today's story, we have a very interesting theological thing happening here. It's one of those that always... Um, always characterizes the gospel of John. John is having Jesus go to the, the home of uh, Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And Mary and Martha both are serving Christ in their way. Martha, as she's always prone to do, is, is making preparations for a meal, making preparations, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to make sure that the guests are are taken care of. Food is served, things are being done for the guests. Mary does something really, really, I'm going to say odd. She takes a very costly perfume called nard. Judas says that this is worth 300 denarii, which was more than a year's wage for someone, more than a year's wage. But she takes it, and it was sealed in alabaster jars with a wax seal on the top of it. And when you break it, it you, you have to use it. That's what it's for. Now, this nard was used for many, many different things. One was to anoint bodies as you prepared them for burial, so that um, when they begin to decay, they would not smell. Normally, Jews will will uh, put people in the ground within 24 hours of their death. So this stuff is used for burial preparation, but it's also used somewhere else. It's also used in the temple by the priest for the sacrifice. So I think there's a couple of things going on here. I think Mary is preparing Jesus for his burial, but I also think that the fragrant incense is indicative of the sacrifice that Jesus is getting to, getting ready to make on the cross. The one thing that strikes me <clears throat> is extravagance. This nard is very expensive and, and costs a lot of money and is being used in a extravagant and, um, loving way. I think that one of the things that this gospel pericope shows us is that God allows us to extravagantly love. Uh, the commentary about Judas being a common uh, a thief and holding the common purse and, and that stuff, I don't think um, 
detour or uh, deters, I'm sorry, from the fact that Mary is doing something extravagant. She is sitting at the feet of Jesus. To me, this, this uh, is part of what will Jesus do with his disciples coming in a couple of days on Monday, Thursday, and when he will sit at their feet, <clears throat> wash their feet, humble himself. Mary has humbled herself. She's at the feet of Jesus, and she is blessing him and blessing the household with the fragrance of the nard. It's extravagant love. It's wasteful in a way, wasteful love. And I believe this is the kind of love that Christ has called us to do. I know, as your rector, I, I know at times when we do things, how many people can get upset about extravagance? We didn't need that. Uh, we built too big of a building for the outreach house. Or uh, that was too expensive what you're doing. And I know that there's times when we need to be phys physically responsible for the things that we do. But I do think Christ has called us to extravagant love. I think he has called us not only to serve the people that are around us, that Christ came to be served, to serve, not to be served. And as disciples of Christ, like Mary and Martha, we are called to serve one another. But I also believe that we are called to extravagant love, extravagant love. May the Holy Spirit move in your hearts this Holy Monday. May you look for ways to love the people that are around you in extravagant ways. Now is a difficult time where it seems like we're loving people at a distance or video. I know I had to do a FaceTime with my grandchildren yesterday. It hurt me. I wanted to, to hug them, but I did let them know how much I love them. And I'm trying to be, to lavish that love extravagantly on them, even if it's remotely. May God remind us that we are called to servanthood ministry and that we are called to extravagant love. I thought I would end each one of these meditations with a prayer that is for the day that we're in. So I'm going to pray the colic for Monday of Holy Week. Let us pray. Almighty God, his most dear son went on up to joy, but first, first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Rest forget that we, walking the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen.